Hey y'all, welcome to Establishing Eden. I am Kalmisha Berry. I am the lead servant here and I am excited. This is the first video of Cultivated for Covenant where God has given me um, the instruction to post a series of videos for those who he has promised covenant marriage to. And God is literally moving quickly in this season. So many of us, so many of his people are coming out of the wilderness, out of the winters of our lives. And God is giving us our identities and our names and establishing us and placing us where he wants us to be. Um, we have been rooted in him. That was the purpose of the wilderness, to root us in him, to prune us and to get up the weeds and the tares and all of the the um, brokenness and, and poison that we got when we were in slavery um, and he he, he um, saved us from slavery, saved us from those old mindsets, saved us from those old traditions, saved us from those old ways of living and introduced himself to us and we received him. And when we received him, a lot of us did not know what we were signing up for, <laughs> but we were signing up for a complete new life and a new identity and so we had to go into the wilderness to be prepared for that for this new life and this is the season we are coming out of the cave many of us have come out of the cave and even though we are very excited and we have a new outlook and we've coming out of that little depression and sadness and gloom that we were feeling during that pruning because parts of us were being ripped away hallelujah to be replaced um even though we um have come out of that we are still like i don't feel depression i'm feeling better about a lot of things and i have this new internal insight but i don't know for what well god is saying he is establishing you a lot of you have been getting direction from God to do this, to start this, to go there. Um, and that is him. That is him giving you that insight. And a lot of the insight is coming from a place of, um, well, when a lot of the insight is being perceived by you from a place of, Lord, how am I going to do that? Lord, what is this going to come to? Just trust him and be obedient. But God told me that a lot of his people, a lot of the identities that he's establishing um, and the names are attached to a role. And one of the roles is husband and wife. Listen to me. And I'm so excited about this. I am a wife myself of 12 years and it has been beautiful. It has taught me a lot. But God has told me to release um, what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Now, that last video which was the introduction video i told you guys to listen to a song by molly music on the album called um by, called molly is and it's called walking shoes and i kind of want to touch on that that song specifically because and, and y'all got it so good he taught he attached an album to this song when i was exercising just walking around um god was like use this attach this to that series um and use it and give them a song each time and he even like spelled out some of the songs for me and i listened to this song again myself my god and it was so powerful and i went back and i've been listening to it and the holy spirit gave me some insight that the way he wants me to reveal to you guys through this song now this is um because each series i want you to really take time and get in god's word yourself to study it out i really would like god's word to take root in your life so that you can um experience right the product of uh, God's seed in your life, right? And so we have to uh, continue to, to study for ourselves and to seek God and ask him to give us revelation. So don't just let me be your source. God should be your source. And I am just a vessel that he is using to speak to you and he will confirm it in other ways in your life. But um, this song, it's something that you can listen to as you're driving. A lot of times we can't always pull out a pen or the Bible or the paper. But this song will reinforce God's word in your life and what God is doing in this season. And the song is called Walking Shoes. I took some notes. And the song begins, I got my walking shoes on. I can't tell you where I'm going, but I'm, I'm on this lonely road. And the scenery is beautiful. Uh, and he's basically saying he's going somewhere. He's, he's come from this place. He's going somewhere. He doesn't know exactly where he's going. All he knows is he sees the beautiful all around him. And he's by himself right now. And this is a lot of us. God says this embodies the darkness that we just came out of. This song is where, what, where we are right now in the name of Jesus. Man. And God is saying that um, what he's saying in this song, he, he talks about, he says, I can't tell you where I'm going, but if I keep walking, I'm going to be okay. So he's speaking of all of the, this song gives us all of the ingredients that we need to make it past this season. He's talking about faith. He's talking about obedience. And I need you to go listen to the song because I can't sing it. And I was scared to post it on here, so I did not. Um, he was talking about his belief in God's plan. He says, I, he says, if I keep walking, he said, I'm going to meet it halfway. Uh, he says, I don't know where I'm going to, but if I keep walking, it's going to come halfway. And that made me think of James 4, 8, where God says, it, um, 
if uh, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you, right? So you're, you're going towards God. You're walking towards, you're being obedient and walking towards God and what he's told you to do. And in your obedience, you know that God is going to um, make, work that thing out for you. So you're just trusting him. You're not walking blindly. You're walking in faith. And so... I think we have to be careful when we say we're walking blindly because we'll scare ourselves. Well, you have to say that you're walking in God's faith. And so you're coming out of that dark place and you're following God. And in that song, he says, step one, step two, step one, step two, step one, step two, step three. Taking the steps that God has told you to take and understanding that this is a process in your life. You've come out of that last season. It had its own process. It had its own due um do process this is a new season with a new process right and it's important that we don't get weary and well doing because a lot of times we'd be like lord we again and and it's because we don't know what it is that's going on but we have to trust god and so listen to that song y'all uh gives us revelation i'm gonna tell you a couple of things that that um that you will get that you that the revelation that god gave me and hopefully when you listen to it that you get from the song the coming out of the wilderness faith in god your belief in God's plan, commitment. He said, I had a made up mind. He said that in the song, he has a made up mind. Process, I said, step by step, he was talking about. Following God. He says that his word, he says, thy word is a light unto my path, a lamp unto my feet, or a lamp unto my path, a light unto my feet. He's talking about being grounded in the word of God, being led by God's word and nothing else. And he's talking about fearlessness. He says, don't be afraid. He says, but he's following God consistency, consistently keep going on. And so that is what that song is about. Y'all go watch, listen to that song. And I want you to, um, to, to, to add it to your album. I'll give you another song to add this week. Um, for this week, it'll be the new song for this week. That was the song for this episode. I keep, uh, I didn't want to say episode, this video. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so let me begin with this whole, um, these, all of these series are going to be based on, um, Ephesians 5, Ephesians ch chapter 5. Now, in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. And he wrote this letter to the church of Ephesus while he was in prison. And this is a church that he has went to and preached at and taught and, 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 and discipled these people. And he's writing to them to encourage them and he's writing to them as a uh, one of their leaders as one of their examples to tell them what it is that they should be doing and so I'm gonna begin today we're gonna start with um we're gonna start with uh, the first couple of verses and then we will progress through the series we're gonna start with the first couple of verses today and I'll give you the insight and the revelation that God gave me and this is going to plant the seed in your life for God to position and prepare you for the season that uh covenant for your covenant spouse but you are the foundation and your relationship with christ is the foundation and that is what we're going to talk about today okay so we are going to be dealing with verses 1 through 21 today if you want to you can pause this video and read those verses but i will be kind of going through them as i progress and um, i'm going to give you four main points um for this video that will help you help break down um, the word and actually give you um, attach the scripture to it based on the revelation that God gave me so get your pen and pencil and let's go for it so point number one is acknowledgement and acknowledgement acknowledge that God is a relationship with God is the only soil that will produce your purpose in life acknowledge that 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 God, your relationship with God is the only soil that will produce your purpose in life. And I want to start off with the understanding that unless you are individually prepared to um, be a good person alone, or unless you are prepared to actually just Outside of any role, just being a child of God, you are walking in it without, before you even get into the responsibility of relationship on any level, just relationship with God. That relationship is the prototype relationship for every other area of your life, every other relationship of your life. And so Christ is the soil for that relationship for your entire life and for every other relationship in that. So you have to acknowledge that. Not only do you have to acknowledge it, but you have to be grounded in it. I am the vine, ye are the branches. That is what grounds you. That is what's going to keep you when the, the, the storms get to happening up here, right? That you are rooted underground. And so I want to start with verse 1 and, um, and with the topic acknowledgement. And it's going to be the verse 1 um, through 3. Well, verse 1 through 2. It says, be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. 
acknowledging that being like Christ, right? Being rooted in Christ is the only way that you can actually be sustained as a believer, right? A believer is the foundation of everything in our lives. And so if we want to progress into the purpose that God calls for us, this is the foundation for us to be founded in Christ. And so it says being imitators like Christ. And how do we imitate Christ? Well, we have to remember that Christ died for us. He was the sacrifice. And so we are called to that same commission. We must die to ourselves. We have to die to our own desires. And many of us have already come into that place, right? Well, we that's how we entered into the wilderness. We decided to die to ourselves, just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. A God of Gethsemane, you know, I tell people all the time, I like discussing this with my friend, where a lot of times we think that our warfare is against the enemy, right? But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus' warfare was was the old him, with the, 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 the him that he was right then with the him that God was calling him to be. And in order for him to step into who, what God was calling him to be, which was the savior of the world, he needed to die to the version of him that was standing there at that moment. And not only that, he had to leave behind what was attached to the him right then and there. And he didn't die, even though he had to leave it behind. A lot of times we think he had to leave it behind. But he, he he had to leave him behind. I, if the closer that Jesus got to the closer that Jesus got to um, God, to his father, he left behind. When he first entered the garden, he told um, the disciples to stay here. And then he told James and Peter and who else? John. He, he told them three to go farther with him. And then as he progressed farther, he told them to stay and pray. He didn't even tell the others to stay and pray. This was James, Peter, and John. Go look at the scripture. And so as we get closer to God, we'll start losing parts of ourselves. And a lot of those things is not that we will never revisit it again. It's that, that who we are becoming we can't they gotta we have to leave them behind right now and on the other side when jesus when, when god works through us and makes us who we're supposed to be through his son jesus this is what jesus sacrificed for then we will begin to experience it they will begin to see it. they will get a new level of us mind you the same people he left behind he visited in his new light right he visited in his new new light he came and gave them the holy spirit the holy spirit fell upon them he was able to progress them in another level and so this is what we are called to do we are called to die to ourselves to be imitators of christ and become the sacrifice. We are the sacrifice. We have to sacrifice our old selves to become our new selves and to walk into the purpose. And so have you fully committed to the sacrifice? If you've been in the wilderness, I know that you have, but we have to continue going forward. We have to continue to deny ourselves. The Bible says that we die daily and we have to remember that that is the seed. That is a daily seed that we must continue to, to water, die, die, deny ourselves and choose Christ. And so number one is acknowledging that Jesus, um, that, that our relationship with Christ, our relationship with God through Christ is the only way that we can become and be and operate in accordance to who God has called us to. I'm going to take a quick not side note, just a minute to say, you know, you can't do this on your own, right? You can't. So if anything that I'm saying is getting overwhelming, don't let it get overwhelming. It only becomes overwhelming when we try to do it ourselves. The Bible says that he who began the good work in us will complete it. That means that we just have to trust God. There is nothing that you need to do that Christ will not give you the insights to about you will not be left blind without it you're not left to figure it out on your own so don't get overwhelmed these this series in itself is god giving you insight and so all you do is take this information and go before god and say lord if you realize that it's something that you're dealing with lord help me okay lord help me lord guide me this is I, this is what you're requiring of me this is what your word says god and so i need your help that's it if you ask god says he will not withhold any good thing from us so you can tell your anxiety, your doubt, the irritation that's coming up, you bind it in the name of Jesus because, baby, you got in Christ everything you need to become who God has called you to become. Because guess what? You ain't doing it anyway. All right. So two, point number two is honesty and intentionality. And I'm coming from verses three through seven with this verse. I mean, with this point, and it says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper improper for God's holy people nor should there be obscenity foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving for of this you can re for of this you can be sure no immoral impure or greedy person such a man is an auditor, is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Now, obscenity is um, immoral, 
um, indecent things. That's what obscenity is. It's things that you don't supposed to. It's just not that they are not of God, right? A, a lot of times it relates to sex or coming off as sexual or, you know, or uh, that type of thing. And so that's what obscenity is. But um, so that says, but among you, there should be any kind of sexual, mor in sex sexual immorality and all of the things I just said. And we have to be honest and intentional, right? We have to be honest about our weaknesses and our past. That doesn't mean that you live in that place, right? Because you have been, um, you have been introduced to um, the 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 solve for the brokenness in that place, right? But that does not mean that the enemy is not aware um, of where you were, and he does not attempt to continue to attack you in that area, right? And so, being honest about where we come from because a lot of times we try to hide our past under religion but we know that relationship does not allow that in relationship with god he shines a light on those things he doesn't hide them a lot of times we try to hide them and cover them up no light reveals it and so he he reveals it so that we can deal with it right and so that we can be honest about it and so that we can confess our faults right and so that we can be held accountable for it and so if you deal with any of these things if you deal with impurity or greed right or sexual immorality if if you deal with um masturbation or pornography if you deal with um um, what's some of the things if you deal with uh, uh hypersexuality if you deal with you know uh gluttony if you deal with um anything in your past right if you've been molested and you have that brokenness if you've uh if you've molested somebody right if you've dealt with pedophilia bestiality whatever it is lying drug addiction right if you dealt with these things the enemy will try to shame you and cause you to be condemned by it and make you feel unworthy. But that's not what God does when he shines a light on it. God doesn't reveal things to us to stab us in the heart and so we can bleed out with it. He He reveals them to us as if, we, you know, because we try to act like we are, we don't know or that it's, it's no longer there. But he reveals it to us so that we can hand it to him. It's important in becoming the person that God is calling you to be and he's, he's creating you to be. Um, it's an inside out work and it's important that we acknowledge our weaknesses so that we can't um, fall back into the trap of the uh, fall back into bondage of it. A lot of times we go get if you're getting to a relationship and we expect those relationships, um, those people want to heal us. To, to, to take to, to make us feel like we're not that person anymore or to we expect the relationship to prove to other people that we are no longer that we've progressed and that is not the for a kingdom marriage that's not the right reason and so before God even positions us for that now a lot of us have been, got, gotten married in our brokenness but God is healing us even now a lot a lot of us have went through separations and divorce because of this brokenness that we've taken from our past um some of the, the abandonment and rejection that we got from our parents or past spouses and abuse and we've taken those hard places even though we know God even though we understand the healing of God it's like I trust God but I don't trust you but we have to understand when God give us our kingdom spouse that that we have to trust the God in the spouse, right? And so it's important that they meet the prerequisites of this same chapter, Ephesians 5. Now, mind you that Paul is talking to the church here, and he's talking to them about the characters that they should be as individuals. And so God says to, he says, none of this should be among you. And so he's not just talking about among them as people, but among you, within you. None of these things should be inside of you, right? And so when we begin to deal with those things, we have to be honest and hand God those things, because if not, we'll go into a relationship with um, with loaded guns, right? We have, um, we're going to a relationship with dormancy and, and we don't, in God, we don't have these dormant, these things should be like dormant because he plucks them up. And so we don't want, um, a, 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 somebody to be able to trigger the old parts of ourselves that we were called to die to. We're not, we don't want things to lie dormant. We want them to die. And the only way that we can, that they can die is when we hand them over to Jesus on that cross where his blood covers them. Right. And we have to continue to remember that even when people begin to talk and trigger, uh, things in us, even if those people, people who experienced that with us or caused us um, or who did it to us or who we did it to won't um, won't walk in your truth or walk in the newness of who God has created you to be. You have to walk into it. God needs you to know who you are in him. And so you need to be honest about where you come from and you need to be open about that even to, to yourself first and with your spouse when God sends that person to you. This is my story and this is the thing. You have to use the wisdom of Christ. God will tell you when to reveal that to them. He will tell them when, when to share that with you. He will give you insight on who and what right and if it's your person they will be grace to help carry that with you they will be grace to help you continue forward right and then you have to be intentional in avoiding the trap of those weaknesses he, he says this is what you should do it's improper it's improper for god's people to walk this way and so he says let not be deceived with empty words all and even you heard him say 
like joking. A lot of us like to check. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. We check. We talk about people all the time. And you do it in a funny way. But even God says that's empty words. And so we have to be careful. Not only that, in empty words, he's talking about people that's telling you different. Oh, it's okay. It's not that serious. No, you know your weakness. And so in order to keep walking in the liberty of Christ, God says, be not entangled in that bondage again. He says that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so we have to remember that we are not no longer carrying the chains of our past and be free. Girl, girl, dude, listen, God has delivered you. God has set you free. You are no longer that person. You're no longer walking in the homosexuality and deity that you have. You don't have to prove to anybody else. You have to know for yourself. You have to stand in that identity that you identify with Christ, right? And you have to know and you have to uh, uh, decide, make a decision. One thing about God, he's not a manipulator. And he's not a controller. He gives us the ability to make decisions. And we have to continue to choose him. And in choosing him, we truly choose what's best for ourselves. And when we are able to be disciplined enough to choose what's best for ourselves, despite the enemy coming against us, because he will never stop, then and only then we will be equipped Right? And root it for God to give us a different capacity, a different capacity to carry. And as a husband or wife, we are carrying, right? We are carrying other people and we are coming together for the glory of God. And so if your reason to get married is to prove something to somebody, if your reason to get married is to do anything but further the kingdom of God or to enjoy, right? To enjoy um the pleasure. It's like, Lord, I'm ready for me a spouse. I'm ready to get it on. It's nothing wrong with that, but that should not be your source reason. Like, it's nothing wrong with it because, baby, the, the wedding bed is definitely undefiled. Do you hear me? Um, But you shouldn't be sitting up fantasizing about that because that's going to feed your flesh. What you should be doing is saying, Lord, send me my spouse so that we can get on and handle this business that you got for us because a lot of your destinies, a lot of your purposes are in conjunction with who your spouse is and it's going to happen so quickly. So be honest about your past about giving it to God, about that weakness. Be delivered, but be honest, right? So that you can keep your eyes on the enemy and also be intentional about how you walk and about who you are around so that they don't begin to pull you back into that. I don't care if they uh, if they identify as Christian. If they don't have the fruit, the Bible says we know them as their fruit, we have to begin to separate from them and pray for them, right? So that we can all be planted in Christ and so that we can all produce, right? The promises and the purpose that Christ has for our life. Number three, forgiveness. forgiveness so we know where we've come from we know what we've done and we know what's been done to us and so we're going to go to verses um 8 through 14 for forgiveness it says for you were once darkness but now you are light in the lord live as children of the light for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness righteousness and truth and find out what pleases the lord have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of the darkness but rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is the light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Mouthful of words, right? But you have to forgive yourself. Now, we just talked about being honest. It's one thing to be honest about what you've been through. It's one thing to be honest about some things that you've done, some things that you've experienced. But it's another thing to actually say, I can move past that. I accept that that happened to me and I realize that my identity is not in that experience. That is forgiveness. I realize that who I was at that time in my life, I'm no longer that person because I have been made new in Christ. Whether I was a victim in the situation or whether I was the person victimizing somebody else, I still am no longer that person. I chose Christ. And so that blood covers me. And I forgive myself for doing that. Or I forgive myself for um, whatever it is that makes me feel like I, I deserve that. You know, or, or from the feelings or the emotions attached to that. Because if we don't forgive ourselves, we'll find ourselves um, in the place where we begin to um, try to dull the shame that comes with it. Shame comes with unforgiveness, um, um, a, a place where you find solitude in something outside of God. And we have to remember that we have that Adam was naked before God, before he was naked before his wife. And so we have to be purely naked and honest with God and allow him to show us love in our brokenness. Because it is, what did it say in verse one? To be imitators of Christ. When we see God love us in our brokenness, it helps us to see that we are, even we are, 
we are lovable, that we can love ourselves. I always talk about the verse that says to love others as yourself. That verse gives us the insight that loving yourself is a prerequisite to the ability to love somebody else appropriately. And so if you haven't accepted and forgiven your own self, there is no way this is biblical because it says love others. It's just there's no you, there's no way you can do it for somebody else. You can only love someone else to the extent that you love yourself. And so I had to question myself from the point in my life where I feel broken. It's like I don't love myself, but I love my children. It's like you might feel like you do, but you can only love another person, even your child, to the extent that you love yourself. And so your children might not have come to a point in their life that they've shown you um, um, parts of brokenness or remind you of parts of yourself that you hate. And so you don't uh, attribute those feelings to them. But at the moment that they do, and they're human so they may, then you will begin to reject them as well. That's why it's important for let God to prune us and pull that stuff up from us because what Satan will do, he will allow us to mask those things and then he'll hide and they'll lay dormant. And then at the moment when God is, when we're beginning to progress in our life, those things will come up and begin to destroy like boulders and knock out everything that was meant for us. That's why we can't skip a, skip a step. We have to start with ourselves in God. If you're, if you're married and you're going through a hard time in your marriage right now, you dealt with infidelity, you dealt with um, abuse or whatever it is, and the Holy Spirit has not told you to leave. Because one thing about me, I don't tell married people to leave. That comes directly from God. Then you stay and you it's not too late for you. God, you can uh, practice this right now in your life by, by submitting to God, by allowing God to lead you, by operating in love, by working on yourself and forgiveness and being honest and intentional about what you're doing and acknowledging God is your only source because you cannot do it by yourself. This is the beginning phases of becoming the kingdom spouse. You Before you can become the kingdom spouse, you, can, you have to be the kingdom citizen, the kingdom citizen. And then... That, that prototype relationship, God's love through you, God's love in you, God's love for you, my God, begins to radiate from the inside out. It's an inside work. Um, it's an inside out work. You are God's garden. He comes in our life. And just like Eden, he plants there. He cultivates there. And he produces there. And then those fruit come out up and out and those fruit carry seeds and we begin to see the replication of Eden around our life. Eden is the presence of God in our life and it's the presence of God that produces the promises of God in our life. Listen to me. And so we have to be obedient. We have to walk in what God has called us to do. We have to remember what God has told us to sustain from. Now one thing about it, I told y'all God ain't gonna move your feet for you but you have to be obedient. You have to want to obey. There is, you won't be perfect. You will fall short but God says you be ye holy. There's a difference between being perfect and holy. He says be ye holy for I am holy. Holy means to be consecrated and set aside. Set aside yourself for the use of God. When you see that what you're about to do ain't finna give God glory, it's a no for me. You see what I'm saying? And it might feel good to your flesh. And even when you fall short to get up and say, Lord, help me and try to refrain from doing it again. I feel heavy like that spirit of masturbation for single people that desire for sex and, 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 and lusting. And, and that's why you want to get married so bad. God said, I want to purify your motives for marriage. I want to take that away from you. God says, if not, that will, that will be the theme of your marriage. And God, and you get a spouse that's struggling in that area and you'll, you'll, you'll disown them based on a, a superficial thing. But God says, if I heal you from that, I'll give you a spouse and together you guys will be be powerful and the marriage bed will be on fire but i need you to desire greater things than just that that comes with it the kingdom relationship is meant to produce the kingdom family which is the unit of the body of christ right the bible god gives us these children god made adam and eve adults he made them as men and women but through us he produces the seed that becomes men and women that's why the bible says to train them up in the way that they should go now i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself but i want to help you see why it's so important that you do the work to do the self-work with yourself with god and understand who you are in god and forgive yourself and forgive other people and separate yourself from uncleanliness because if you do not how it hinders and takes root and lies dormant and buzzes out and comes in like a plague and destroys your life listen be be honest. Be, acknowledge that God is the one. Be honest and intentional. Be honest about where you come from. Be intentional about walking away from those things and separating yourselves from those type of people. And be um, forgiving of, to yourself for where you were and for those people who, who um, promoted that in your life or who, who are part of that uh, season of your life. Remember where you're coming from. You're coming out of the season of wilderness for this phase in your life. Because let me tell y'all, if you are a follower of Christ, there will be several more wilderness and several more winters, but it will be different levels. The Bible says from glory to glory. And each level, you will have to go through a pruning phase where God prunes the old and gives you the new. Each level, you progress in God. And so this is the, the beginning one, the one when we come first into salvation, whatever phase that happens in our life, it's always the hardest one. Because as we begin to grow closer in God, we begin to understand the process more and it becomes less painful. Listen, 
Uh, well, even if it don't become less painful, we're able to process it better because we've experienced it. Our faith has increased because we know what God is doing. And so God is doing something in your life. He is preparing you for parenthood and even for parents if he's preparing for parenthood that means he's preparing you for marriage because we know that in kingdom babies come from marriage now if you've had a baby out of wedlock like me uh, that's not condemning you i have had two babies well i've had one baby out of wedlock and one baby i was i was impregnated out of wedlock and the baby came into a marriage but it's it still listen this is not to condemn you this is just god doing what god is giving the right in this season it doesn't mean that you haven't repented and you are forgiven if this is for you listen pause the video right down the steps and begin to apply this to your life ask god to give you his own revelation and begin to walk in it continue to walk in it because the enemy wants nothing more than for you not to enter into the next phase all right y'all so we finally reached the end to point number four so we've dealt with point number four point number one which is acknowledgement acknowledging that god is the only source the only soul that will um cultivate and grow us into the fullness of who we were created to be because we were created by him Number two, honesty and intentionality. We must be honest about where we came from, honest about what we suffer with, honest about what our flesh likes, and then be intentional about refraining from those things and be intentional about walking in God's goodness. And then forgiveness. We must forgive ourselves and others so that we can fully grasp hold to the new person that God has created us to be. We cannot um, hold on to the feelings of the past and then walk in forgiveness. You have to forgive and progress forward, right? We don't have, we can't function in fear. And when we operate in unforgiveness, there's a fear of of reliving or re um, um, experiencing the same things. No, we can walk in faith knowing that God has us and that God covers us. And even when people, right, go against what they're supposed to do, that God is um, our all in all and he um, Romans Romans 8 28 our lives and makes them work for his good and lastly um, lifestyle and that's what we talk about lifestyle is number point number four and we're coming from verses 15 through 21 and um, it says be very careful then how you live not as unwise but wise making the de making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. This is the second time we see, say understand what the Lord wants, understand what the Lord's will is. That is a um, requirement and responsibility of us to seek God for his will. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit. Debauchery, debauchery is excessive indulgence in sensual things um, like sex or things that feel good, like eating um, or, or fleshly things. Even sitting down watching TV that just feels so good to us, you know, like excessively doing things that feel good to our flesh. He says, or drinking wine, right? Be filled with the spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God, the Father, for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lastly, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. I want to say really quick that submission, once you get married, right, shouldn't be hard. Because before you even become married, we see here that Paul urges them to submit to one another. As a believer, you should be submitted to other believers. Believers who um, live in accordance with what God says. Of course, we can't submit to everybody because other people have requirements that are not founded or based on the word of God or based on the character of God. But when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to submit to them. Not only just all of that, we are able to submit to other people too when there's righteousness, when there's not wrong, when it doesn't cause us to fall into sin, but to be um, humble, right? And to um, consider other people above ourselves. That is what it's called. Go back to being like Christ, being imitators of Christ. And so that goes to lifestyle. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise. That means that you have to be very intentional about where you're going and what you're doing. Why does God say that? He says, making the opportunity of uh, making the best of every opportunity because the days are evil. We live in a corrupt world. You live countercultural to the world that you live in. You are called to be a citizen of Christ. And you are called from that place. You're called from that perspective, right? And so you have to leave that place. You have to be wise. You have to be intentional about who you talk to and where you go. I think a lot of times that's the hard part for us to break break away from those old people and those old things. Why? Because it leaves us in a place of loneliness. Remember the song, Walking Shoes? He says, I'm walking down this lonely road, but the scenery is beautiful. It's trusting God to bring you the proper people into your life. And until you walk into that season of those people coming, that you are trusting God and, trust, and, and, and being full on the relationship and intimacy with him. We must first learn to be intimate intimate with Christ before we can be intimate with anybody else, right? There's a level of intimacy in every relationship and there are boundaries there, right, that we must respect. So intimacy has to do with closeness. It has to do with how close you are to someone. And it is so 
powerful to understand what intimacy is because that is a large part of marriage not only that that's a large part of every relationship intimacy has to do with the nakedness it goes like i said adam was naked before god before he was ever naked before eve he was created first and so we have to be naked and honest before god so that we can receive and accept ourselves in the light that god sees us remember it says wake up oh sleeper sleeper rise from the dead we've already done that back up in verse 14 we've already woken up we've already risen from the dead it says that this but everything exposed by the light becomes visible god has already shined the light on our dark spaces we've already handed those things that christ's light revealed up to him now he has purified those things he has made them work for us he has revealed to us how he will utilize them in, in our life and so we are called to walk in christ's light not to cover those things up and keep them in a safe place but to expose them and reveal them not only that once we do that we are called to to emit the light to shine christ's light that he flows through us so he says everything it says but everything that exposed by light becomes visible for it is light that makes everything visible and then you, so you make, not only that you are, you, you receive the light, but then you give off the light because Christ works through you. Okay. And so it's important that we, um, understand the Lord's will that goes back to, like I said, it keeps saying that it's important that we seek out God. God I remember I'm thinking of the verse that it says, seek me while you may find me. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is a continuation of seeking God. He says, because the enemy is seeking you. He is, he is, the days are evil. The enemy is looking to trip you up. He is going to and fro looking to trip you up. Don't ever think you will never be right in a place where you you can, right? Your heart is in Jesus. It's in your seeking. It's in your it's understanding that it's a requirement to intentionally, he said, make the most of every opportunity, understanding that you have to be intentional about living for Christ, understanding that you have to be so very intentional because you live in an evil world. You li you are different. You are a new citizen. You're no longer a citizen of this world. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, right? It's your responsibility to bring the kingdom of heaven, the culture of heaven down to earth. The Bible says to thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are the vessels. We are the vehicles by which Christ brings heaven here like Adam and Eve was. Jesus came and died so that that could happen. And so it's important that we walk in it intentionally right our lifestyle must measure up he says therefore do not be foolish but understand what the lord's will is do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery that's obsessive doing things that feel good as a believer we cannot walk in our feelings the bible says that the just shall live by faith we have to live by faith my friend has a term she said she calls it stupid faith it means that what God has told you to do is so outlandish. It makes no sense that you look stupid to other people. And yet you stand on it like Noah did, right? You stand on it like David did. You stand on it, right? And you walk in it and you believe and you live according to it. You don't just speak it, but your lifestyle resembles it. He says, uh, be, he said, instead of debauchery, instead of getting caught up on things that feel good, be filled with the spirit. The spirit has the ability. The spirit is the true essence of what happiness is, is what, what joy is, it, uh, of what peace is. And so instead, be filled with the spirit. He says, speak to one another with psalms, hills, and spiritual songs. That's worship. God is telling us how to protect our mind. He's telling us how to protect our being. It's to be filled with worship, right? And he also says sing unto the lord make music in your heart always giving thanks to the father it has to do with gratitude understanding your source it goes back to number one acknowledgement understanding who keeps you who makes you whole that you cannot do it of, uh, in and of yourself he says that and he says, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is unto God. And so when we're doing everything is unto God, that means we're not being reactive. We're not treating people as people treat us. I see all the time on social media labels like I'm giving off the energy you're giving me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's how you how I treat you is based on how you treat me. Those are not kingdom principles. The the, the word of the God, the God's word tells us as kingdom citizens to treat others, right? Um, do to treat um, others as if we were doing it unto God. 
that's hard i know but we can do it that's why the bible says to be filled filled with the spirit because it's by the spirit of god not by might not by power but by his spirit says the lord and so we must be anchored in christ as individuals because this is the post this is the place that god plants and builds where we sprout as a tree of family where we um get into common covenant with our spouse and then we have our children and then our children are built and become posts and come in covenant with their spouse and they have children and this is how we build the kingdom this is how we be fruitful and multiply this is the point of kingdom and covenant marriage this is why god wants you to understand who you are in him before you ever come into contact with your spouse this is because god does not want that spouse to trigger old parts of you that he has called to die he's called you to cast them into the fire and let them stay there right not to he's he's cleansed his temple just like the kings did in the book of like king josiah did in the books of king where you go out and you take all of that unclean mess that is not like god and you take it out where it cannot be resurrected because a lot of times we want our own idols to be alongside god it's like i love god but this makes me feel good and so there you are kind of like king solomon resurrecting all of these false gods can in, uh, up against his God and, and for the sake of what it feels like or for the sakes of what it brings for the sens 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 sensuality he did it because his wives wanted it the wife that God told him not to marry right this is what reveals to us what happens when we marry people that are not um, does not have the characteristics of Ephesians 5, 1 through 21. We begin to connect based on um, our own wants and desires. And we begin to, to make decisions based on debauchery, based on what feels good, based on... Um, our flesh and we begin to find ourselves outside of the spirit of God. The word says to be filled with the spirit. And so I encourage you today to go through them four steps, to really be honest with yourself, to ask the Holy Spirit to give you a specific revelation, to give you revelation, raiment revelation for yourself right now in the name of Jesus. And so that you can begin to, to understand, right, who it is that God is has called you to be and to be very clear about it, who it is that you are no longer. Make a note, write down the things that you used to be and then write down who you are now and be very clear about it i am no longer a liar hallelujah because god has called me to speak the truth i speak the truth of god hallelujah i am no longer a thief because god provides my needs i don't have to take it i am no longer sexually driven hallelujah because i find um solace i find peace in christ hallelujah and i know that in due season right that god has a spouse for me to meet that need i don't have to get it in a uh i don't have to get it in the world i don't have to seek it from the enemy hallelujah i can get it from the from god i am no longer a drug addict even if i my flesh craves it i have died to my flesh and i live in christ jesus and i don't have to give in to those cravings i am no longer a drug addict i am no longer a, a person that um, that's hypersexual, that's, that's, uh, uh, that, that's desiring children and, and animals and things like that. I bind it in the name of Jesus. The enemy puts these things on us to oppress us. A lot of them were birthed out of sin from things that were done to us as children, things that were done to us when we were in the womb. And we have to bind it and we have to walk away from it. But we have to be honest about it, right? And a lot of times we don't know the root. And so we have to ask God to reveal the root to us so that he can pluck it up in the name of Jesus that we can hand it to us so that we can walk in no shame that we can walk naked before God because when you have reached the place where you are naked before God when you're not hiding things from God and you could God we hide so much from God when we are in a place where people can't trigger us, even before we you, you can't trigger us, you know, even people that haven't um, accepted our identity, that haven't accepted that we are not, we no longer identify as who we used to be, but we identify as followers of Christ. We identify as uh, kingdom citizens, people who don't understand that we walk in that light and walk according to it and realize that God is the only one that can change our identity. He can only one that can give us a new mindset. He says, uh, be, may this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. He says the old has passed away and you have become new. Accept that for yourself because this is the foundation that God is going to build your family on. These are the 
fruit that carry the seed that God wants to plant in your children. He says, train them up in the way that sh they should go and they will not depart from it. The only way that we can do that is that we be that ourselves, right? To love ourselves. Uh, he says to love others as yourselves. The only way that you will be able to love your husband or your wife and the children that you guys produce together is that you learn to love and forgive yourself and walk in. And the only way that you can stay in that forgiveness is to intentionally walk in the righteousness of Christ. It's to intentionally um, avoid the enemy. It's to intentionally make the most of every moment. The Bible says to consider, he's telling you to consider the consequences of everything that you do, despite what you feel. Don't get caught up in the sensation of things, but to understand the purpose and the why behind everything that you're doing. Because God is calling you into a new level of responsibility. He has given you a new name, and so you have to stop answering to that old name. You have to stop being upset when the enemy tries to trigger you with that. You have to get smart enough to see that the enemy, what he's trying to do, and you have to bind him in the name of Jesus, and you have to forgive yourself when you fall short, right? And you have to stand and be planted in Christ and know that if you get out of Christ, that is the only way that you can lose. As long as you in Christ, he says that I will make it happen for you. He says, because you are my temple and for my, and because you, because you are my temple, you are my showbread, you are my billboard. Your life is meant to bring me glory. And so I want people, he told the children of Israel, like, I want all the nations around you to look at you and call you blessed and know that you are blessed because it is your God. He says, when you rise up and when you lay down, you will be blessed because I, I'm using you to draw all men unto me. You are the source to which I will draw all men unto me. And so I need you to commit to me. And the Holy Spirit says, when you commit to me, then you will begin to flourish. Then everything that I have called you to be will be. So if God has promised you a husband or a wife and he is a restoration in your marriage, some people have been divorced and will be getting back together. Listen to me. It's going to be um, a divine change because God has to separate you guys to deal with that brokenness so that he can bring you back together accordingly. And then some people who have been separated, God is going to bring you a new spouse, right? God's going to bring you, you got that guilt behind you. God says that just because you fell in that season, you will not fail in this season. But God says, I want you to work on yourself. You've come out of the cave. You know my voice. And so now I need you to listen clearly. God, get some notebooks. Get some prayer time with God and lay before him. Take these notes. Get before God. And, and I look forward to you following up next week. The song for this week is Royalty by Molly Music. It's called Royalty. It's on that same album called Molly Is. Um, listen to it. I hope that you guys are making a playlist for this album. I mean, I said for this album, for this series, because um, I know that the Lord is doing something. I want to say a quick prayer right now, and then I'm going to let you guys go. I'm praying this video is not too long. I definitely don't want to go over 40 minutes, like for real. But anyways, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you right now. And God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, for your glory. I, I, I repent of any sin, any uncleanness, God, that will pre prevent me, God, pre prevent my prayers from being heard, Lord. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you touch every viewer of this video. I ask that every man, every woman on this video, God, that you would give them insight, God, into their identities. Reveal to them their name and their purpose in the name of Jesus. Reveal to them, God, who you called them to be God and I thank you God that you give them God did you give them a clear separation of who they used to be to who they are now God thank you for getting us through that wilderness season thank you God that you have called us to something and it was not for anything thank you that you was pruning us God so that we can produce more in the name of Jesus thank you that you are cultivating us God we bind the chains of our past God that try to hold us down God we rebuke them in the name of Jesus God we mute the mouth of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We chain his hands and his feet, God, and we send him into the dry land reserve, God, until you come and judge in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, that we are we 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 rebuke the enemy out of our lives, God. And Lord, as we as you empty us out, God, that you fill us, God, with your spirit, God. You fill us with your spirit so that the devil cannot come back and see an empty house, but to see us filled and walking in your glory, God. I thank you for an increased desire to pursue you, an increased desire to pray. An increased desire, God, to, to, to praise and worship. An increased desire to read your word. An increased revelatory understanding. Lord, I thank you, God, that you will make it happen. That we don't have to be stressed about how it will happen or when it will happen. Because it's in your time. Your word says that in due season, 
We will reap if we faint not. Thank you, God, that we won't faint. Thank you, God, for a fresh wind and a fresh anointing for this season, God. Thank you for keeping your people at peace and hopeful. Hope doesn't mean maybe will it happen. Hope means that you know it will happen and you're just waiting for the goodness to come. I heard something somebody say at the conference. I went to Sarah Jake's conference and she said, um, the young lady there said, she said, um, faith means I believe, but hope means I believe that it will happen for me. I pray today that you will not only have faith, that you will have the hope that God will bring forth what it is that he's promised in your life. You will be kingdom husbands and wives. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen.